Hey guys, Ryan here, and so I'm going to bring you a replay in the SU 130PM on Prokhorovka, which is not a map I like too much, usually because of artillery. I'm going to be able to do Spandex in his Ragnarok, and it's a tier 9 game with a few tier 9s, and there's also a few tier 7s, and there is one artillery. However, I realised that me being worried about artillery doesn't make much sense, because I'm in an SU 130PM, so hopefully I'll never get spotted. Um, now there's one light tank on both teams as well, and I always say on any map, but especially Prokhorovka Malinovka, if you can kill the enemy light tanks quickly, you instantly have a good advantage. So what I tend to do on this map is usually, um, before I get to the position I want to get to, after a bit of time I'll stop when I think the light tank's about to show up, and I'll get ready to take a shot. I don't think I've shown up, but what I'm doing is I'm actually moving over to one of these bushes before I shoot. At least it's getting a little bit closer to the 1-2 line, which is where I'm planning on going. And I'm going to pre-aim for the light tank. And I'm a rackin' for a thousand damage, so... Pretty good start to the game, the team seemed to like it. Uh, and now the one only light tank's been taken care of. Now... On my issue 1.30pm, I want you all to know, I run a bit of a, like, it's, I, I don't run a competitive equipment set on this, it's a bit of a meme build, because I like view range. I've got binoculars, and coded optics on this, as well as a gun rammer. Um, because of this thing's camo, I actually like to do spotting in it, sometimes, because you can also spot light tanks with this thing. Um, so... That's why I've got the coat up, so when I'm moving to position, I've still got increased view range, but when I get to a bus, I can stop, activate the binoculars, and then I've got even more. So, it's a bit of a mean build for my scout, so it's like a scout SU-130. Uh, but in this game, I'm playing more passively, mainly because, as this Campander 50T isn't playing too aggressive, what's going to happen is... We've decided that I'm going to try and play a bit more passive, which is boring for me, by the way, what's the shot? That went exactly towards the panther, but the smoke from that dead tank over there is actually covering the rock, so I didn't see it. Um, so although this kind of placed out a bit more boring to me, I've decided to stay back because it's mutually beneficial. I can get damage without risking my own life, and as you're going to see, Spandex is coming over, and he can get the assistance, so that way we can both have a good game, I get damage, he gets assistance, it'll work well for both of us. And with there being no light tank on the enemy team, that gives Spandex a bit of an advantage, something one less thing he has to worry about, and he's currently pushing up. I'm following up behind him in these bushes, and he spots the Yak Panther too. When I get shot, there are 578. Now, I've said before, but the 520 Alpha in this tank feels really nice. You can get some really good high rolls in this. Now the Air Panther 2 is unspotted again, there's a Camp Panther 50T, and I'm quite worried about the Camp Panther 50T. Obviously, quite a well-armored medium tank. Um, and Spandex also has to be fairly worried about him. Because if I get spotted, I know there's a Yak Panther 2 down there. And I don't know where their other TD is yet. Because they've got an SU 130PM as well. And I'm assuming he's going to be down the 1 2 line. He gets tracked, and unfortunately, I bounce off his turret. So that's a bit of a shame. But now that he's dead, I'm going to move up to the bushes a bit more. You'll see on the map, to my left, that the two TDs are also following behind us. So that pretty much means once Spandex uh, gets the spot on these people... So we've still got the Arc Panther 2 to worry about, and what might be an SU-130PM. Spandex is going in... And he actually spots the SU. Now, unfortunately, I'm actually getting some of the assistance there. I don't know why. Um, again, the binoculars coming up trumps, I suppose. Yak Panther 2 gets spotted. He actually relocated. I do get a little higher roll, but not enough to kill him. However, that means Spandex gets the kill. And now we've pretty much cleared up this flank. Now, the enemies are on the hill, and at the other side of the little train tracks there. And we're going to move forward. Unfortunately, as I'm moving forward with my coat of optics, I'm actually going to spot the uh, artillery. So I mean, I'm going to get the assistance for that, which means unfortunately Spandex misses out. 
Now, I have it heat loaded at the moment, and that's because there's an E75 and there is a Type 4 Heavy to worry about. Unfortunately, we spot the T44, and he's about to get behind the train track, so I just snap a shot in before I'm fully aimed, and it actually goes into his track, which is very useful. RNG was with me on that one. A little back to AP now. Um, and I've decided I'm going to hold the centre here to try and get a shot up at the hill. And again, the mobility of the SU-130PM is just amazing. They me to believe the Scorpion G could actually be a good tank, because it's also fast, has a fully triple turret, but, unlike this thing, is actually accurate. I've been spotted, but I want to hit the Type 4 first before backing up. And it's actually the T-34-100 that spotted me. Thankfully, I don't have too much to worry about, since every enemy tank is at the other side of this train track. Where the E-75's been spotted. I'm going to have a look to see if I have a shot at anyone heading towards our base. I do not, and then I realise that by taking care of the E-75, that's going to be the main thing to help our team move from their side of the map back to our base. So I finished off the E-75, and that's got a little spandex to move. Now unfortunately our AT-15's in a bit of trouble with the Panther and the T-3400. I'm not going to be able to help him in time. But... He is going to get a little bit of assistance. Well, I could probably not because I'm probably spotting these guys too. But he is spotting these guys for me. Um, so I'm able to shoot without getting spotted. The panther's going to disappear, so I'm going to aim for the T3400. I've just got to leave the shot quite a bit because these aren't the fastest shells. And I do hit him. Now, when the binoculars go up, I can actually spot both of them. And this is where the coated optics and binoculars comes in handy. Pick up the panther, I do get spotted. The T-34 is going for the artillery. And again, I'm going to have to lead the shot a bit here. And I nail him. And I'm pretty sure this game, I might be wrong, I don't think I've missed a single shot. I've bounced one off the Camp Hunter 50T, but I don't think I've missed a shot. Now, I've decided, because I'm in full heavy, it's the last time I left live, me being me, you all know what I'm going to do here, I've decided I'm going to go for a ram kill. All I need him to do is not track me. So what do you think's going to happen? <laughs> oh, he fucking tracks me. I had high explosive loaded, because I knew even if I missed him, I could probably still kill him on the amount of hit points he had there, and thankfully it did work. Just a bit of a shame I couldn't get the ram kill as I wanted. He had to go and ruin it by tracking me. With no silver boost, I actually make 191,800 silver, which is very nice. 5,800 damage for the high caliber, just under 1,000 assistance, and 4 kills for the ace tanker. I did get a sniper madam. And uh, Spanish came second with 1,000 damage, but just over 5k assistance. So I think I got just over 6.5k combined, and Spandex got just under 6.5k combined. So very good game by us. I probably did miss a couple of shots, I just can't remember which ones. But overall, a very good game. I played a bit more like a TD. Spandex did a lot of spotting, and I think a nice little game there. That shot on the light tank at the start really helped, I feel. So, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you all in the next one.